Uh, Mr. President, uh, there are a number of issues I'd like to talk to you about. Can yes. I start, first of all, um, with the political situation in Zimbabwe today? One of the impediments to substantive negotiations between ZANU-PF and the opposition MDC mm. was the opposition's demand that you step down from office. Mm. Now, they've told us that that demand has gone away. Do you think it's now time for negotiations between the two parties to get underway? Well, if there's business to negotiate about, we will welcome negotiations. But if there's no business, I don't see why we should talk about negotiations. What I mean is, if you have a democratic system running and you have your ruling party, naturally, uh, it has its policies and is trying to effect its policies and it's on one hand and the opposition on the other. Well, the real uh, uh, functions, respective functions of the two are clear. The government is there to govern and the opposition naturally to keep watch, uh, try to criticize government as much as possible in the normal way. They are in parliament. They uh, get their voices heard in parliament. Their criticisms are made there. And uh, that, that's the normal way of running a democratic system. Their argument uh, is uh, that uh, the election wasn't fair and that they actually That's what they what say. We say the election was fair. We say all the African groups pronounced the, uh, the election fair. There might have been one odd one which uh, went the way uh, Europe wanted things to go. And, of course, they are a voice not of themselves, not of our people. That is the MDC, the, the, uh, the voice of Europe, the voice of uh, Mr. Blair, Mr. Bush. Before the election took place, I remember it clearly, the voter rolls were confused. People weren't sure where they would vote, which part of the country uh, they had to vote No, to. there might have been some confusion here and there, but by and large, things were quite correct. I mean, we were not running the elections for the first time. We had run elections before, and we, we are very faithful to our dom democratic system and the demands of that system. We have held elections timelessly every five years, and uh, there was very little to learn, you know, for this last election. One of the concerns of the international community and concerns from inside the country as well has been the level of political violence that appears to accompany Zimbabwean mm. elections. Now, there are claims yesterday that ZANU supporters attacked MDC headquarters. There are concerns voiced by uh, Amnesty International that uh, mm. human rights abuses take place, that ZANU-PF thugs carry out mm. intimidation mm. and attacks on the opposition. How do you, uh, do you accept that, that there is look, political? You're just looking at violence, uh, alleged violence, affecting zanu -BF. What about the other side? Have you looked at it also? Yes, well, it's, I think it's conceded. This, this, that recent, e this recent election, uh, by election in Lupani, uh -huh, they went there armed. Axes, spears, knob carries and all. And... Uh, you saw what they are, they are member of Chimani Mani did, even in parliament. There is more violence from the MDC than there is from uh, ZANU-PF. One allegation is that um, a lot of the ZANU-PF youth supporters come from um, youth training scheme camps. I've been to one of the camps. Um, why do youths need to learn survival skills and marching um, on parade grounds? What is the, what is the why point Why does the country ever have to run a program of national service. That's what you're asking. I'm not asking if it's national service. This is a youth training scheme. It's meant it's to be about Yes, job it's, it's national service in a sense. And it's a training scheme. Yes, why not? Why shouldn't we train them? Is there the country are they brutalized? itself. Are they brutalized in these camps? Are there, there allegations of no, raping no, taking no, place? No, 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 no. Those, these are allegations. You're just looking at the negative. What, why don't you look at the the aspects that are promotive, that are positive. The youth must be developed and developed in all, you know, in respect of all skills. They must think Zimbabwean, feel Zimbabwean, and be nationally conscious.
but is we that want not them just, to be. But is that not just following the ZANU-PF party line, that they're not seeing another side of the argument, that it is... ZANU is the party in government, and the policies of ZANU are what we are there to implement, to effect. We do not, you know, stand for the MDC. Your, your position as, uh, in the country for 24 years is obviously a paramount in the politics. Do you think now it's time for you to stand down? You've talked about succession struggles. Why do you want me to stand down? Well, I'm asking, do you think it's time to stand down? Jonathan Moyo is saying no. that the discussion about uh, uh, whether the succession issue has caused problems in even elections, because uh, many ZANU-PF were considering Who says who's going to be next, Jonathan Moyo. The, the, the discussion. Yeah, 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 sure. Of course, people, will, even without the discussion, people will st would still have had to uh, discuss succession, those of them who, who, who feel it's an important subject. And, and there are just a few in the leadership and who would want naturally to look ahead. And I've said there is nothing wrong in people discussing the issue. But what is wrong is really they are trying now to... Uh, put themselves in positions, you see, which uh, might be regarded by the generality of the people as as uh, as unacceptable. Do you have a, a, su a successor? No, in no. your own mind. No. And how long do you think you're going to stay as, as president? For as long as the people want me to stay, uh, but not for eternity, of course. Would you stand in the next election? <laughs> I don't think so. I think I, I also want to to rest and do a bit of writing. Can I ask you about the, uh, another issue? This is the, the view of the international community uh, towards you and towards them. Recently at the uh, National Chiefs Convention, you described Tony Blair as a colonialist who still thinks he owns Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. Surely that isn't really the case. In That's the case. The, that man, I don't know how Britain came by him. You can see some of the uh, mad things he has done. And uh, the world now is in turmoil. But you don't think that uh, Tony Blair, or Britain for that matter, mm. considers Zimbabwe a colony? Surely not. Yes, he does. He does. In, in, uh, he doesn't say so, but uh, his actions do say so. Uh, what has he, you know, not done to uh, uh, try and control thing, how things should go here? Uh, he, has tried, he, he has opposed, you see, my... my election. He, he has called upon nations to, uh, in fact, regard Zimbabwe as a lawless country, country, a country where democracy is not respected, where there is no rule of law, where human rights do not exist. And all that is a lie. You, it's not just, of course, Britain. It's not just Commonwealth. Botswana has been critical in the past. South Africa and the Sadak Nations, another club that you remember. Critical of what? Critical of the fact that, for example, 1.3% um, of its economic growth in South Africa didn't happen, almost as a direct result. Of no, the in if you 20 look... 20 to 30,000 jobs didn't happen. No, 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 no. Trade no, no. declined by 15 Ma billion rand. Yeah, no. No, we, we were not the cause of that. We don't run the South, South African economy. No, the, but you're, you're vitally linked to it at one yes, point. But now our, tr not. our trade with them has always been good. And they admit it, that in spite of the sanctions, you see, the trade has been, uh, you know, rising, rising, rising in terms of volumes. And uh, what they, they Sorry, all, President, what, all what, the what time to their advantage. It's advantaged. declining, it's not increasing. The what? It, the trade is declining. No, 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 no. You go and ask uh, Erwin, he will tell you that in spite of all that has you know, been done to Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's trade with South Africa has always been, you know, rising, not not declining. Hmm? Countries and, uh, like Britain and the United States have given, what, Britain 51 million pounds in the last 18 months to assist Zimbabwe, and yet you only have critical words for Britain and the United what, States. What assistance? They give um, financial assistance to? Uh, to, for, to aid agencies directly to bring in food and uh, whatever WFP. other assistance is needed here. We, we, have, uh, we have expressed our gratitude to WFP for its assistance. But the, the, the major donors of Britain and the United States. Well, yes, sure. So when we say thank you to WFP, we are saying thank you to the donors of uh, WFP, aren't we? Are you saying thank you to Great Britain for assisting We are saying thank you to WFP. 
What, why do you, what are your links with Britain? Why are you unhappy with Britain to such a degree? You were no, no, a no, friend no, for a very to, long to time. Tell you, to tell you the truth, we are not unhappy with Britain as Britain. With Blair's Britain, yes, we are unhappy. That is the rulership of Blair. Very unhappy. Unhappy, first of all, he's a man who is, I don't know, he considers himself as a, a superhuman. He doesn't want dialogue, he doesn't want to talk. Would you like to have negotiations with Britain again? Would you make efforts now to negotiate and to discuss? We have made enough efforts. If Britain wants to talk, we are ready. We have said so again and again. And even uh, the, the people he has asked to intervene, uh, Basanjo, uh, Tabombeki, have asked him, you see, to try and have dialogue with us. There is a Zimbabwe which some countries would want to regard as a pariah state and uh, never say anything good about it. Everything that it does is bad. But we are not that. But, but I've met we, people we, who have been beaten. I met a union uh, leader who yeah. was beaten for putting out uh, leaflets calling on for industrial action. He was beaten, but, taken into a field and left. But you will get those actions happening even in Britain. You, are you saying you don't have, you know? Trade union leaders do not get taken out and beaten nearly uh, to death by the police in Britain. <laughs> but I, I saw Mr. Prescott box uh, uh, one person. I, I, I think they had, whether he, he had been, uh, you know, uh, that was a, that is an incident. Nice that is very right, difficult. Mr. Prescott did not then go and get the police to take that man out. How about because he, which he, goodness me, you mean if if a, a whole prime vice prime minister, deputy prime minister beats a person, boxes a person, and that person falls down, that is more acceptable than the violence of a small group that might just be, you know, mistaken in its own belief that violence will work. Mr. President, you alluded to, to personal attacks, and uh, there's one uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu described you as a cartoon figure of the archetypal African dictator. Now, why would a, a well-respected man of the church say that? Because he's an angry, even embittered little bishop, you see, uh, who thinks that his own view should hold. He's talking generally. He's not talking a specific yeah, incident. Yeah, he's no, talking no, a, I understand the context it, by which you think he background. disagrees. But it might be the background, but the yeah. point is he's talking about events, modern history, t today. It's he not, is, it's, what history is that? He's talking about um, issues that we will come on to shortly about land reform. He's talking about the rule of law not being in Zimbabwe, in what, Zimbabwe and democracy not who, being looked at, is which is why he uses the, the one term little archetypal bishop, African The dictator. one bi little bishop becomes the proponent of our political system here? No, but he's Has widely he respected it? throughout the world. Respected for his religion, perhaps. No, respected for the Truth and Reconciliation Committee, for being a man who is able to go through the whole of the apartheid era and still speak out against a repressive regime. He's he, identified a repressive he regime. Is, he was a frightened man during, uh, during, the, uh, during the apartheid era. And uh, the little he did was perhaps just criticised and criticize even in an innocent way, you know, apartheid. When called upon uh, to do something, something that would distinguish him as supporter of the ANC, he didn't, he didn't, he wouldn't go that way. The World Food Program says urban food shortages are approaching critical. United Nations memo to say that you could reach the level of tonnage that is, it's being estimated is complete nonsense and quite impossible. The farms, outsiders are saying, simply aren't producing enough food. Um, you've got bread prices that are, state media say could go up by 50%. So what, what is the WFP wanting us to do? What they're, 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 what they're saying is you, you need food aid. We need food aid and... 
and, and that you're not the land to produce. We don't need to produce. No, they're saying you need to produce more and you need food aid. You're saying you don't need food aid. In fact, we last do. week you're saying you needed 2.3, you'll produce 2.3 million tonnes, which is far exceeds anything ever produced before. You're saying you do need food aid. We've produced that before. You're not going to produce it this year, though. We are producing it this year, definitely. There is, I mean, our estimates are there and, uh, and they show us that uh, we will have food enough food for the country and with this, with the surplus 800,000 tons but why do, why do, why, why is wfp wanting to feed us when we are saying we, we are not hungry it should go to hungrier people hungrier countries than ourselves they need the food mm -hmm. and we urge it to go and do good work there the archbishop of bulawayo a, uh, a critic why, why, I know. why foist this food upon us because uh, we, he is respected. No, no we don't want to be choked. To we have enough. He says that the, t uh, as many as 10,000 people died as a direct result uh, of starvation, that's lack a, of food, that's, perhaps illnesses. That's another to, to the, the bishop, uh, the unholy man. He thinks he's holy and telling lies all the day, uh, every day. And, oh, come on, 10,000 people, where, where did they die? He should even, I mean, show me a single person who died of hunger, that is. When we first arrived here a couple of weeks ago, government ministers estimated cop production at about 1.5 million. Many thought that that was a little high. In, a, in, the, in two weeks, it went up to 2.3. Now, how did that happen? They didn't suddenly have a bumper harvest and they'd got their figures wrong. That's the fact is, and the view from the outside, is that you will get 2.3 million tonnes, but you'll do it by buying it from outside, probably from Zambia. Well, would you want to wait here until the harvest is over? And then you'll be I'd like able to come to back and see it. I'd okay, like to see well, sure, sure, come back. Going. You'll be free. You, you are invited to come back. Are you going to be buying food from outside? No, definitely no, never. Not this year. Mr. Why, the, why are all these estimates wrong, then, Mr. President? From the agriculture, we have an agricultural system which is second to none in Africa. Yeah. Had is the, is, the, is the argument, not has. The it is no longer we producing. The had we have, but why are these estimates? The, the, so the wrong? whites who were here were mere actors, farmers, ill-educated, and were brought in a system which is much more enlightened than the system they had. You see, yeah. why is it always a, a, a race issue? Why is this? Is it well? Such this is why we wonder. Why is it that white men? always think white. There are also black men on this continent, you know, and they also matter. That's what you must tell Blair. The we, 20, 24th we Independence Day rally, the whites are continuing to show contempt. They must have their resistance broken once and for all. Yeah. That was yours. This are, these are, it's antagonistic wording. If you've won the war mm -hmm. and you've won the re revolution, why are you still having to point up differences between blacks and whites? Because the, the whites are still are contemptuous, are still racist, and uh, we don't want that in our society. Do you want them out of your society? That kind, yes, out, they must go. The good ones can stay, and we have uh, quite a good many good ones who are just, and the Britons, for one reason or another, have that difficulty, psychological difficulty, to adjust to rule by blacks. But after the period of limbo, just, you changed the no, rules no, no, so no, that no, you no. could actually just appropriate farms. When, when so, sorry, no, 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 no. Why, do you, why do you want to avoid, avoid this part? Major put, was putting a package together, you see, in uh, naturally response to, to our request that they continue to recognize their colonial res mm -hmm. responsibility. But then he was defeated. The conservatives were defeated. Blair then took over. It's Blair and his government who really deviated from the course that uh, Major had taken and started now showing arrogance. Their philosophy was, we are a Labour Party, we uh, only recognize uh, uh, 
poverty alleviation as the, the policy that should apply to uh, Zimbabwe and other developing countries. It seems manifestly unfair though to read in a, a gazette that your farm has been taken off you and that is the situation now for farms that are going to be redistributed. How do you mean? The, to read the, in the gazette why? That the, the farm is no, next on the list. No, it used no. to be go through the courts, it doesn't even bother going through the courts now. No, it no, just but ends up people are saved with the notices, they're told. You've been applauded by the opposition even for your moves to fight corruption. Is it not a case that the party has become corrupt under your stewardship, which is why, 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 in, why? Well, why in 2004, because you've been in charge, you're going to have to move. Well, why the party? Why are you talking about Or the government, the party, these are government, the finance minister has these, been... These, these has are been. corrupt individuals. Oh, yes, of course you'll get corrupt individuals across the board. Uh, you are now telling me that, that um, your government is absolutely pure. Without I'm not something. representing our government. I'm simply well, asking questions. No, no, I'm saying, well, well, yes, but I'm putting it back to you. You are under government in your country. And you get individuals who are corrupt, naturally. Yeah? So uh, if you get them, it doesn't mean that everybody else is, is, is corrupt. A regular well, allegation from the outside world is that, that, Mr. President, you are corrupt as well. Ah, come on, come on, come on, come on. It is an allegation that's made. Uh, uh, pe on, critics please. point to the, to the building of, of your new home as a sign oh, of come. where could you afford yeah. a house Rubbish. of $25 million. Who, who said it was $25 million? That I was given that by the party very early on, 1984, 85. And uh, the party gave me that and the home got burnt and we started building. The party was going to assist me. It was not able to do so and we've been ourselves trying to build it from our own resources starting in 1986 and uh, it has been buying bricks and uh, we got a company which is uh, uh, an Enego company which is Yugoslav and we agreed that we would be providing materials little by little and uh, we pay just for their labor, they agreed. And we have had assistance, of course. Some countries have donated. They've got uh, uh, some uh, timber uh, from Malaysia, thanks to my good friend, uh, former Prime Minister Mahatia. Mm -hmm. The Chinese also have donated the roofing materials, tiles, and so on. I interviewed the Reserve Bank Governor, who does seem to be a man determined to turn things round. Point is, he, he, he has huge problems. Uh, inflation, 600%, maybe more, maybe over 1,000%. Um, a 40% contraction in the economy between 1999 and 2003. Um, you owe the IMF $273 million. Uh, You've been, they'll no longer, World Bank and the IMF will no longer lend you any money. The, the economy's in a right mess, isn't it, Mr. President? It was, yes, it's now improving. It's getting out of that mess. Sure, yes, with sanctions imposed on us. The sanctions are mainly imposed upon individual members. No, 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 no. This is again where you don't understand your prime minister. What did he do? He, uh, yes, said personal sanctions because that was the more acceptable form of sanctions uh, to some of his allies. But he, then behind us, he says no uh, to countries don't trade, stop your aid, and so on. President Bush was asked this question recently. Has he made any mistakes? He didn't give a very convincing answer. Have you made any mistakes, Mr. President? If you make mistakes and don't correct them, then you, you won't develop at all. Uh, but the mistakes must not be uh, in the majority, form the majority of, of your thinking of your actions, of your deeds, they must be, you know, just the exception to the positive, affirmative and correct actions you take. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you're a mistaken person the whole way through and you become a devil then. Uh, but I don't think I've been uh, that devil. Do you think you'll outlast Bush and Blair? No, I don't compare myself to them. I just uh, do things in accordance with the wishes of my people. I uh, sit down, we talk, and 
And that's it. I, I'm uh, a man of the people, actually. I'm a born peasant family, and uh, I have a peasant background, and I know what it is, you know, to work with people, to hear them talk, to allow them to, you know, play a part uh, in uh, in your life. And this this is, I think, what has carried me to this day. And uh, although I sit here uh, as president, I know uh, that the that post I owe to the people. President Mugabe, thank you very much for joining Sky News. Thank you.